Hello, and welcome to this CloudMaker expert talk. Uh, today, Shannon and I are going to be talking about Azure Defender for Azure Security Center. And hello, my name is Dwayne Natwick. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a cloud training architect lead at Obsgility, uh, where I author content and provide live and on-demand training. Uh, I've been in the IT for over 30 years, have multiple Azure certifications, including the Azure uh, Security Engineer. I also have the Microsoft 365 Security Admin Associate uh, certification and my CISSP for security as well. I'm also a certified trainer for Microsoft and a regional lead for that program. I'm very, fairly active on social media and you can uh, ping me on any of the links provided on the slide. And I'm Shannon Keen. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. I sit on the enterprise platforms and tools team. We focus on a lot of community outreach with content, one to many conversations, meetups, podcasts, etc. And in my world, uh, I am pretty much Azure all the time, but I do spend a lot of time talking about the Azure VMware solution. So you may have seen a talk or two uh, about that topic. And then, uh, you know, part of what bolts onto that is security conversations. So that's when Dwayne and I had kind of came up with this idea of let's do a handful of sessions surrounding Azure security. Uh, fairly active on social media. Feel free to connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or you can also email me. Happy to answer any questions or get you connected to the right uh, answers you're hopefully trying to, to get as you explore more of the Azure security space. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda. So we'll talk about the CSPM and the CWPP. We'll talk about what those acronyms stand for. It's Microsoft. We do like acronyms. We'll talk about the different flavors of Azure Defender. So there's Azure Defender for server, for SQL, for storage, Key Vault, ARM, which is Azure Resource Manager, Azure DNS, AKS, ACR, App Service. Then we'll go through some final considerations and I'll showcase some of where this lives inside of Azure Security Center so you can start to break apart what you'd like to do in terms of onboarding this within your environment. So what is CSPM and CWPP? Well, CSPM is the Cloud Security Posture Management and CWPP is the Cloud Workload Protection Program. So the lack of, sec of a basic security hygiene in any given ecosystem continues to enable cyber criminals to use well-known well vulnerabilities or new variants of them to exploit environments. So they were observed to leverage the fear and uncertainty associated with COVID-19 uh, with great success. And I think a lot of us saw the series of breaches that occurred over the course of the last year. While the COVID-19 themed attacks represent a small percentage of the total malware we observed at Microsoft, our tracking of these themed attacks shows how rapidly cyber criminals move to adapt their lures to the topics of the day. So to just to, just to kind of break it down here, we saw a surplus of cyber attacks coming to our customers' environments as well as Azure All Up. And we at Microsoft use the same tools we try and get customers to use. So we've got a lot of interesting data surrounding everything we saw over the course of the last year. So the CSPM, as I said, refers to the Cloud Security Posture Management and the CWPP refers to the Cloud Workload Protection Program. So organizations are starting to realize they need to closely monitor the security and security posture of their workloads against threats. So Azure Security Center covers various scenarios by offering both the CSPM and the CWPP capabilities. Um, the CWPP capabilities are essentially Azure Defender. So Security Center is available free to all customers. That's where you see the CSPM features. So you can see things like the secure score, detection of security misconfigurations on your Azure machines, asset inventory, and more. So you can use those CSPM features to strengthen your hybrid cloud posture and track compliance with built-in policies. The CWP 
side of this is really surrounding Azure Defender. So this brings the advanced intelligent protection of your Azure and hybrid resources and workloads. So enabling Azure Defender brings a range of additional security features within your environment. So in addition to the built-in policies, when you enable the Azure Defender plan, you can add custom policies and initiatives. You can add regulatory standards such as NIST and the Azure CIS benchmarks, as well as the Azure Security Benchmark for kind of a customized viewpoint of how you relate in terms of compliance. So let's let's dig into each one of these a little bit deeper here. So Azure Security, Azure Defender for servers adds the threat protection and advanced defenses for your Windows and Linux machines. So for Windows, Azure Defender integrates with Microsoft Defender for endpoint to monitor and protect your workloads on Windows-based machines. Security Center presents the alerts and remediation suggestions from all of these services in an easy to read format. For Linux, Azure Defender collects audit records from Linux machines using the audit D functionality, which is one of the most common Linux auditing frameworks and Audit D lives within the mainline kernel. Um, so when you think about this, you've got the integrated license for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for Windows servers. You've also got vulnerability assessment scanning for VMs. So Qualysys is what we've leaned on in terms of having that be a feature within the tool set. You don't need a Qualysys plan. You don't need a license. That comes as part of enabling Azure Defender within your environment. If you enable Azure Defender, you can also bring about just-in-time VM access, which is awesome. So you can leave your VMs with a public IP and then turn in turn on just-in-time so that if somebody needed to RDP into a Windows server or SSH into a Linux server, they'd be able to do it by way of going and enabling just-in-time. And I think we've talked about it briefly prior to Today, you can enable it for, I think, up to three hours. And so you've got to be able to do whatever tasks you need to do within those three hours, and that's auditable and kind of trackable to you initiating that, that session. You can also uh, bring about file integrity monitoring or FIM. This allows you to take a look at all of the different files that make up Windows and Linux. So everything from files to registry entries um, to application software to any of these types of files that live on servers. Flipping on Azure Defender, you can flip that on as well. And it's really great because it helps you try to figure out if you've been breached. Um, so it's, it's helpful before a breach and it's definitely helpful after a breach. Then there is the uh, adaptive application controls. So this will kind of use the AI features of Azure Security Center to define allow lists for known safe applications on your machines. You can always tweak that and add whatever else you needed to add into the mix. The adaptive network hardening is another feature of the Azure Defender for servers. So you can uh, apply network security groups and then you can enable the uh, adaptive network hardening that helps you figure out additional ways to harden network security within your VM environment. Um, you can also think about Docker host hardening. So a lot of these IaaS servers that are out there, a lot of development teams just have standalone Docker hosts. You can harden your hosts a little bit better when you flip on Azure Defender for servers. It'll highlight areas in which you will want to make sure your environment's more secure so that you don't become compromised on that VM. And then, you know, there's the fileless attack detection so that, you know, like any of the, um, the, uh, malicious payloads that might be injected into memory. You want to actually see if that's happening. And this will scan periodically and try and be uh, proactive enough so that you can actually handle it if it's happening in real time. Um, and then on top of it, you know, there's the Linux audit D alerts and log analytics agent integration for the Linux VMs. So, you know, the Audit D system consists of a kernel level subsystem which is responsible for monitoring system calls. So you can imagine enabling that, you kind of get a granular feel for how your Linux VMs are, are performing as well as how they are handling up to any potential for a security breach. So that's another kind of feature of the Azure Defender for servers. All right, so uh, let's talk about what Azure Defender does for our SQL uh, SQL databases within uh, within the Azure environment. So there's a lot of additional features and functionality that gets turned on when we turn on the Defender, the Azure Defender 
in Azure Security Center, uh, especially around uh, around SQL. Now, if you're familiar with the Azure environment, there are three particular flavors of SQL databases within within Azure. One is putting uh, putting SQL Server on a VM, which doesn't give you as as rich a uh, a protection and and availability of these services as we do with uh, with the platform based services of Azure SQL database or a managed Azure SQL uh, Azure SQL managed instance. But but it does provide uh, to some level uh, with log analytics and ability even if you have a SQL server on an Azure VM you get those Azure Defender capabilities that Shannon was just talking about for uh, for the virtual machines as well as we can get the events and all of the metrics from uh, through log analytics for for the SQL software uh, into Azure Security Center and do some uh, do some utilize Defender a little bit there as well. But with from a platform standpoint, if you're using Azure SQL database, Azure SQL managed instance, and as well Azure Synapse Analytics, which is the artist formerly known as Azure uh, Azure Data Warehouse SQL Data Warehouse. Uh, we get all of those features and functionality of Azure Defender uh, as well as Azure Sentinel that can provide these advanced threat protection capabilities to find uh, potential harmful attempts to breach SQL servers across our entire uh, estate. This works as well, uh, ties into Azure Arc uh, to enable Azure Arc for SQL Server for our on-prem environments. Uh, so we can, so wherever you have that Microsoft SQL Server database running, we get some get these capabilities of Azure Defender. Uh, the big one of the big things is these vulnerability assessments that uh, Shannon was talking about uh, with uh, that for virtual machines. Uh, the vulnerability assessments actually were available first for within Azure Defender, and they've they've rolled that out to virtual machines as well, where we can now discover and remediate all of these potential misconfigurations, find controls that you need uh, to put in place within your environment uh, to protect your databases. Because obviously when we're talking about protection and we're talking about how we're protecting our, uh, our security posture, we're talking about defense in depth and we're protecting our data at its whole, which you know, when we're talking about databases, this could be if we're a healthcare provider, PHI, it could be all uh, you know our human resource application storing our uh, our entire employee and customer databases with 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 uh, addresses and social security numbers. We need that information on these databases needs to be protected because this is in most cases where our most sensitive information lies within our organization. So Azure Defender helps to provide those capabilities. And here's just some other use case scenarios here of of looking at you know some of our typical attacks and you know these are these are kind of your typical you know worst case type attacks that we see in terms of a SQL environment where we have a, an external SQL injection where somebody has has found a way to uh, to script their way into our SQL environment and eject, inject some malware within our environment. Uh, data exfiltration, you know, a data insider, somebody, uh, you know, a disgruntled employee that's trying to gather customer information before they leave, you know, understanding what's going on there. Uh, brute force type of tax where we have somebody that's trying to uh, trying to put some sort of uh, of malware on our environment and ransomware that's going to uh, going to uh, encrypt our information and not allow us to uh, you know to access that information and then hold us ransom and uh, or do some sort of mining of our information all of these these main types of attacks are ones that as we do vulnerability assessments these vulnerability assessments are looking at these common types of attacks and what those attacks are and what we need to then do to to take care of remediating those attacks and we can see here where we can you know disable uh, SA login we disable the command shell and then we find you know then 
that is a control that we can put in place that these vulnerability assessments then find and and helps to detect then those potential attacks as well later on so that they you know it emulates those attacks and finds and gives us remediation capabilities then to to put those controls in place that avoid those attacks in the future uh, from happening to us at the and makes us proactive in terms of of protecting our environment protecting our data and avoiding any kind of data loss uh, within our environment and to continue on with obviously we have our databases are in an integral integral part of our uh, of our infrastructure and where we're storing data but we also have storage environments and Azure Defender also provides us with some capabilities around storage as well. There's advanced security capabilities that can help us protect ourselves uh, for our blob containers, our file shares, uh, you know, with, uh, if you're familiar with storage within Azure, file shares are the SMB type shares that you can map drives to just like you can with a file server in your on-premises environment. And these Azure, the Azure files obviously have a lot of potentially have sensitive information depending on who's utilizing those. So how do we protect those? And then the data lakes for our big data capabilities, we have all of this information that's coming into our environment. We have our hierarchical namespace in terms of data lakes in our storage environments that also are bringing in all of this telemetry data and storing all of this telemetry data that again could be very sensitive could be information that we don't want to uh, be uh, be compromised in any way. And we have then those capabilities within the Azure Defender for storage to look at and, and protect how that information is being utilized, what's taking place with it, uh, and also help us if we are utilizing Azure files to file servers on-prem, having that protection to our private data centers as well. And typically what we're worried about in terms of a storage type storage environment is those those content, those phishing type attacks that are coming through our app that might be going to our SQL environment that might be scanning our blob storage for anonymous file access. And we can identify those threats and identify what potential vulnerabilities we have in terms of we, where we have anonymous read access to our files or uh, or have uh, have files that are accessible through non-secure connections like just strictly HTTP rather than encrypted HTTPS and what we're what's taking place in terms of our environment detecting those potential malware uploads uh, where we have potential phishing attacks uh, dis, uh, suspicious IP addresses that are that are coming into our environment, maybe scanning our IP, our, our environment, uh, un, uh, unusual anonymous access, and maybe uh, unusual data extraction. So if if we are seeing a whole bunch of uploads taking or downloads taking place from our storage accounts, flagging that information and giving us alerts on that information as well. That brings us to Key Vault, and I think Shannon, you're going to talk about a little bit about Key Vault, which kind of ties into those storage accounts as well. Correct. Yeah. So Key Vault handles all of your secrets, right? So that certificate secrets, that's your actual passwords. So you you'll want to turn this on, and you'll want to make sure that there's any sort of tracking happening within the environment. So Azure Defender will track unusual and uh, potentially harmful attempts to access or exploit Key Vault accounts. So you'll want to make sure that you've got this environment at least protected on so many fronts because of the fact that that's a, a big spot of vulnerability related to your applications to your environments as a whole and you'll want to know when um, any sort of anomalous activities occur so azure defender will show the alerts to you it will also alert you maybe it sends it to an email account and then you can figure out how to mitigate the, the suspicious activity within your account so having this 
show up within your environment is extraordinarily helpful because without it, it's sort of a, a, an area you would never have any access to. You would never know if it's being tried, uh, if, if somebody's trying to access your environment and take over your applications or your environment as a whole. So the use cases we want to kind of track, right? So we want to recommend that Key Vault is enabled related to Azure Defender. Um, you want to also probably configure it with a private endpoint. That's a newer feature in Azure, and I think a lot of customers are gravitating towards it just because of the fact that prior to, it was a publicly accessible service since it was a PaaS service. So Azure Defender for Key Vault will detect, uh, assess high volume of Key Vaults. So if you've got a user who's trying to go and access a Key Vault secret, let's say it's a ridiculous amount of times, you probably want to be alerted on that and then Azure Defender will help, right? Um, it'll detect access from the Tor exit node to a key vault, which is helpful because I think a lot of folks don't realize that's still a thing, right? The, the Tor browser, people heard about it, but then it doesn't really get the press it used to. It's still around and that still could be a way in which somebody could be at, trying to access the secrets of your environment. It detects suspicious policy changes and secret query in a key vault. So if all of a sudden you're changing the ability to create and delete and edit secrets, you, you probably want to take a look at that because that's not a normal thing, especially if I'm part of your environment and I normally never even get into key vault, right? Um, so again, it would also detect unusual uh, users accessing a key vault. So it helps you try to figure out trend analysis over the course of time of the key vault's existence. And I think turning it on is sort of a no brainer in that regard because you don't want somebody to get into your environment, access secrets, get you get in, um, conduct whatever they needed to conduct, it, you know, exploit info, um, use your environment to exploit additional info, right? There's so many different ways these attacks sort of manifest. Then there's the Azure Defender for ARM or Azure Resource Manager. So Azure Resource Manager is the deployment and management service for all of Azure. It provides a management layer that enables you to create, update, and delete resources in your Azure account. You, you also use management features like um, access control, locks, and tags to secure and organize your resources after deployment. The cloud management layer is a crucial service and it's connected to all of your cloud resources. So because of that, it's actually becoming a target for attackers. Uh, Microsoft recommends security operations teams monitor the resource management layer very closely. And the Azure Defender for Resource Manager automatically monitors the resource management operations in your organization, whether they're performed through the Azure portal, REST APIs, the Azure CLI, or other any programmatic Azure clients, right? So Azure Defender runs advanced security analytics to detect threats and alerts you about suspicious activity. So um, it's another thing to think about, right? Because we moved from everything living on prem to everything living in Azure, and this is a layer in which malicious actors could come in and try and take down your environment. So the use cases are really, uh, you know, suspicious usage in VM extensions. Um, protection tools are all of a sudden disabled on a VM. Um, you want to figure out operations that are happening from suspicious IPs that aren't normally used in terms of accessing environments. Um, impossible travel, if all of a sudden my account's act, trying to access something from China, Russia, wherever, that's probably something you want to be alerted on because that's not a normal call that my account would make sitting in Chicago, right? Um, log in from a suspicious location as well. So Azure Active Directory does some of this related to risky sign-ins, but there's other ways in which you can use that, the types of logging that exists in, in kind of the activity log itself and start to try and triage what's really happening related to a potential breach if it's happening. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the you've got notice if there are malicious Azure pen test toolkits being used. So the microburst toolkit, if that's running, you want to be able to be alerted on it. The PowerZor, um, you want to figure out if that's being run as well. These are not great things to be running in your environment. You probably want to get alerted on it if it's something that's happening. And a great way to kind of track all of that is through Azure Defender for ARM. And in terms of the Azure Defender for DNS, so this provides an additional layer of protection within your cloud resources. So it continuously monitors all DNS queries from your Azure resources, and it, it runs advanced security analytics to alert you about suspicious activity. I feel like 
you know, we don't normally think of that in the on-prem world because we were very comfortable with everything living in kind of a four wall sort of thing. Well, now that we are moving everything to the cloud, or at least we're starting to move things to the cloud, we have to think about things a little bit differently. So Azure Defender for DNS protects you against issues that include things like data exfiltration from your Azure resources using DNS tunneling, um, uh, malware communication, uh, you know, th things of that sort become more prevalent when you've got your DNS service sitting in a, in a cloud provider. So you, know, you wanna make sure that you're alerted and you're aware of any suspicious activity. So the Azure Defender for DNS is a great tool to enable in the mix. The use case scenarios are communication with those command and control servers, right? Bit mining activity, phishing activity, dark web activity. It's interesting that all of our advanced analytics can do some of this, right? And, and I think that's the reason why a lot of customers gravitate toward Azure Security Center because of the fact there's all this advanced security analytics that sit behind the service, kind of handling all of the real detections and real alerting uh, on that real-time basis. So that, that helps you, whereas some of the other vendors in this space can't do it as natively. So, you know, if you are comfortable with a third-party solution, there's nobody telling you you can't bring that, but you may want to think about leaning on Azure Defender for some of these resources that are harder to track with the third-party vendors that do a lot of the security analytics over the course of building that solution in your environment. Um, you probably also want to know about attacks through DNS queries. So you want to know uh, DNS tunneling, right? Um, that's the cyber attack method that kind of encodes the data of other programs or protocols in DNS queries and responses. It's awesome that you can just flip this on and it will do that for you automatically. Um, you'll want to figure out if there's DNS cache poisoning, right? So that's a method of, of DNS spoofing in which your system logs fraudulent IP addresses in your local memory cache. And that leads the DNS to recall the bad site automatically for you, um, even if the issue gets resolved. So you're still going back to the bad site, right? Um, you know, you want to Take a look at the network intrusion signatures. It's a kind of footprint left behind by perpetrators of a malicious attack on a computer network or system. So it's great that you've got that from an investigative perspective as well. Um, you want to make sure that you know you're you're analyzing any sinkhole DNS queries as well. This will just give out a false result for a domain name. Um, and I think figuring out that moving to PaaS resources is kind of the direction most companies tend to approach. So having something that handles those PaaS resources at that level really becomes impactful if you're thinking about giving yourself the most breadth related to security coverage within your environment. All right, so let's talk about the Defender for container services. We're going to start with uh, AKS and then we'll talk about ACI as well and, and container registries. So Defender for AKS, uh, there's a lot of capabilities here uh, with uh, with Kubernetes being such a, a, an important service and, and largely utilized service becoming more and more popular within the Azure environment. Uh, there are a lot of capabilities within, within Azure Defender for our AKS service, including you know, uh, including managing and uh, and monitoring each new AKS cluster and node uh, that is then discovered through Azure Security Center. Azure Security Center then looks for potential misconfigurations, like it does with uh, with all of the other services, finding you know actionable steps for compliance to security best practices, which is really what ultimately Azure Defender is doing and Azure Security Center is it is evaluating all of these services against security best practices. And then it then can continuously analyze our Kubernetes services for potential threats based on uh, security events, uh, network data uh, that and processes being created that are outside of the norm. Uh, and then also is reviewing the Kubernetes audit log to report any threats and malicious activity that's detected, such as uh, an API request to the cluster from an IP that's suspicious. And it, then it looks through all of these audit logs. And if you look at the diagram and just look at the, you know, we have our control plane, we have all of our nodes here, and we have all of these events that might be taking place that are all feeding through log analytics and feeding up to Azure Security Center to continuously uh, 
discover you know any additional managed instances maybe there are managed ins new managed instances that are coming online and we need to evaluate the each of those instances each of those new nodes uh, to see make sure that they're configured properly make sure they're they are handling all of the proper best practices within our environment and best practices that Microsoft is recommending in terms of uh, in terms of security amongst the entire environment and among you know uh, typical to uh, the other containers that we have within our environment as well as the in the uh, the overall ecosystem within Microsoft and what they have in terms of their best practices. In this case, this shows a potential attack flow where we have a an exposed service where we have uh, have somebody that is a malicious attacker that is sending in uh, potential uh, sen sensitive information, malware information into our uh, our node, and it is then recognizing that it's alerting. Uh, and we're finding these alerts as it's going through our APIs and our entire control plane and finding that there's a mining activity that's taking place. And so, you know, if we have a single node that is exposed to potential attacks, it can then infiltrate into our, uh, our entire API. So finding those attacks early and remediating those with new controls for those new nodes uh, that might be unprotected is very important to uh, controlling and protecting our overall uh, AKS environment. And the key things and the key points to take into account here is that uh, from a Kubernetes standpoint, we have uh, different ways to take this crawl, walk, run approach to how we are protecting our environment. The key thing, as we were talking about in terms of databases and virtual machines and storage accounts is the vulnerability management manage you know making sure we're doing our vulnerability assessments that we're uh, that we're reviewing those vulnerability assessments just doing a vulnerability assessment is not going to help us at all all that's doing is detecting potential vulnerabilities and where we might be exposed to potential threats but until we start doing uh, doing hardening hardening our hosts doing some level of of hygiene within our environment, enforcing certain policies, that's where we start to uh, start to make a level of impact within how we're protecting our environment. Uh, and then we really get into then uh, getting into meshing our services with the network and identity capabilities, which is really where we're really now uh, protecting our entire ecosystem and, and our entire infrastructure uh, from a standpoint of uh, of protecting everything from the uh, from the front end and the perimeter all the way down to our data that is within our Kubernetes instances. And something uh, something new to talk about here is is the admission control policies that are part of the, these best practices in, in our Kubernetes controls, where it's now a level of Kubernetes, you know, the, that Kubernetes level hardening where we can now put those security controls in place at each of our our workloads rather than just overall in terms of all of our APIs. And now we're we're providing a level of of admission control and that perimeter gatekeeper uh, gatekeeper service where we can now watch all of the requests that are coming through the API server, server and and find potential threats before they get to our clusters and then create a list of unhealthy workloads that we may need to put additional controls in place and maybe potential deny deny options and based on the recommendations to make sure that everything is secure. So we might deny certain accesses and put different controls in place while we are evaluating what other controls need to be put in place to secure our environment as we go through. And 
to continue that container based uh, based approach and what Azure Defender does, let's talk a little bit about Azure Container Registry and how it protects our container registry. If you're familiar with containers, our container registry is really where where all of our code and everything is that that really is passed to our nodes, whether we're utilizing Azure Kubernetes services or whether we're utilizing uh, Azure Container instances within uh, within the Azure environment, having our container registry protected from potential threats is going to be extremely important because if we if our container registry becomes compromised, we could be actually installing some level of malware into our uh, our Kubernetes nodes and to our container instance nodes. So we need to make sure that these that we are doing vulnerability scans uh, to our images uh, to our container registries so that so that we are evaluating and making sure that there are not any potential threats. We find those vulnerabilities. Uh, we find you know, recommendations in terms of the details and what the classification is in terms of some severity so that we can remediate those threats and we can protect those and have those actionable recommendations and evaluate those recommendations uh, based on those security best practices. And this slide just kind of goes through what takes place here in terms of that image scanning as well. We have our crawl walk run diagram at the top again that we talked about a couple slides ago, but it all is the same here where we're now providing some level, we're providing a seamless deployment and configuration, and we're providing a level of scanning for our registries at for all of our push, pushed images and have a have visibility into uh, the vulnerability of our images up front rather than uh, rather than finding later on that there's a vulnerability in in those images once they be once they get pushed to a node and then it infiltrates our entire environment and then those image scans in runtime so to continuously scan those images uh, within our uh, container our container registries as they are part of our Kubernetes cluster to find where we might have missed uh, missed a potential vulnerability, where one has maybe come in through an API and uh, through that attack surface uh, to close that attack surface and put proper controls in place and make sure that we are getting to that approach where our network, our identity, and all of our, our clusters and registry are all properly controlled based on best practices and we've remediated all those potential vulnerabilities and threats. So Shannon, I think you're going to talk about the Azure Defender for app services now. I am. So just like all of the other services, Azure Defender for App Service detects a multitude of threats to your app service resources. So app service is a PaaS resource. You don't have a VM like you would if you had a web app on premises. So you need a way to understand the security posture within the environment. So it'll help you detect execution of multiple types of vulnerability scanners that attackers frequently use to probe applications for weaknesses. Um, it'll take a look at uh, malicious IP address that might be trying to use uh, that somebody might be trying to use to access your environment. Um, maybe it's a, a sitting on an FTP interface. Maybe it's the actual website itself. Maybe there's some sort of authentication mechanism that seems to be not working correctly. You can get alerted on anything that happens on on that front. Um, you probably also want to think about having those alerts show up when high privilege commands are trying to be run. Um, maybe Linux commands on a Windows app service, um, a fileless attack behavior sitting in memory, uh, digital currency mining tools, and many other kind of suspicious or malicious code execution activities. You can also identify any dangling DNS entries. So dangling DNS protection is available whether your domains are managed with Azure DNS as an external or, or as an external domain registrar. So it really depends upon how you think about the security posture holistically. If you've got an external registrar, that's fine. This can help if you also use Azure to handle your uh, DNS resolution. You can think about leaning on this to kind of help out as you try and clean up your environments after they've been decommissioned. 
So the use case scenarios are, are pretty straightforward as a result. So the recommendation is to enable diagnostic logs with the app service. That's something that's pretty straightforward to set up and turn on. Um, a lot of the diagnostic settings aren't flipped on by default because a lot of people will test things and tear it down. If it's a long-term web app, flip that on. It'll be helpful in trying to determine what's going on. So it will help with the dangling DNS records for uh, app service if they've been deleted. Now really dangling DNS issues aren't a usually a result of lack of diligence in removing or updating DNS entries. Um, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you, you can think about it like um, it, it's, a, it's a database essentially, right? DNS, it's not quite, but it's kind of like a database entry. And uh, when you're cleaning up resources, you may forget to clean up DNS. And so you just want to make sure that you're aware of any sort of DNS resolution calls. This can help out, right? Um, and then you can think about detecting any fileless attack behavior uh, that, that's happening in your environment. Um, you can detect file download from malicious sources, any connections made to a web page from anomalous um, IP address. You want to probably want to know about that. Digital currency mining related to any of that. You probably want to figure out what's happening with your, your web app, especially if it's not a web app that has a lot of high traffic at a specific given time. Because um, remember, you flip this on, it's on all the time. So if something's happening at two in the morning and it's very atypical in terms of a usage pattern, you probably want to be alerted on that. And flipping on Azure Defender for, for web apps really helps you pinpoint what exactly is going on, where and, and why in terms of trying to both mitigate and examine what has happened if you've already been breached. So I think you're going to, oh, Dwayne, you might be uh, on mute. I am on mute. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some final considerations here around, you know, around everything we talked about. We've talked about a bunch of services here around Azure Defender and what really ultimately is it trying to, or are we trying to do? And I alluded to this a little bit before, you know, ultimately we're thinking about and we're talking about defense in depth and we're talking about what we're going to do to protect uh, our environment across the entire uh, entire platform for and infrastructure uh, from you know, identity and access all the way down to our data. You know, the, the physical security uh, is obviously something that uh, that in the Azure environment, Microsoft's taking care of uh, in our on premises environment. We're taking care of those uh, those capabilities of who has access to the building, our uh, our auditing and our uh, you know, our scanning of individuals and uh, and uh, you know, background checks and all of those things of who has access to our physical environment. But when we think about all of these other areas and other layers to our defense in depth approach, Azure Security Center and Azure Defender are helping us along the way in terms of finding vulnerabilities in terms of our identity, in terms of our perimeter and network, uh, our compute in terms of virtual machines and our container services and at their app service and application level as well to ultimately protect this little circle down at the bottom called data, which could be our company, uh, our company data, our financial information. It could be personal information of our customers, our employees. It could be health information if we're a healthcare provider. All of that information that that is really valuable to us as well as valuable at times to our attacker. We need to protect all of those things. So how we do that and what we do uh, in ter terms of our due diligence and our due care, uh, Azure Defender and Azure Security Center help us uh, to find those potential vulnerabilities, provide us with recommendations for controls that we can put in place so that we can then do a proper threat analysis on what is uh, what we're going to uh, going to put controls in place to mitigate, or what we're what what potential issue, you know, what potential uh, um, threats we might uh, just accept because there, you know, we don't believe that it's going to affect us to that uh, to the degree that putting that control in place. One of the things that I can say is uh, is really look at the potential of of not put uh, and what might happen if a control is not put into place, not just from the cost of that control, but if you are a regulated 
regulated entity if you don't put that control in place and you uh, have that that threat uh, initiated within your environment, what that might cost you in terms of potential fines if you're not compliant with those regulatory standards as well. So when you're doing your proper threat analysis, you need to take all of those potential costs uh, as well as even uh, as as well as even uh, potential reputational costs in play when you're doing your threat assessments. And Azure uh, Azure Defender is very transparent in terms of what the cost is to put it in place and provides a very rich amount of, uh, of protection to your environment. And in addition to Azure, uh, Azure Security Center and Azure Defender with Azure Security Center, there's a tight tie to Azure Sentinel and utilizing uh, a level of streaming alerts to different SIM solutions, both from uh, from a third party as well as Microsoft's own cloud native SIM and SOAR uh, service of Azure Sentinel and utilizing that graph security API that's part of the entire Microsoft uh, ecosystem for Microsoft 365 Dynamics, Power Platform, uh, and Azure to provide those alerts and provide all that logging that then is going to go through uh, a SIM solution such as Azure Sentinel and utilize those Azure Security Center connectors that are very closely tied to uh, within log analytics to send that information and be able to then do some rich investigation and hunting within the logs for potential threats and vulnerabilities. And I think Shannon, you were going to provide a demo of the dashboard a little bit so that we can uh, can see a little bit of what's taking place. And you're on mute now too. <laughs> well, darn it, I thought I was <laughs> off mute. <laughs> yes, you, you've got that right. I'm gonna showcase a little bit of where this exists inside of Security Center. Yep. Um, did it work? Oh, I had to pick. Hold on, one second. Hold on one second here. Let okay. me fix something here. I gotta send. It's hard to pick the right thing and make sure the right, right. thing is being shown. Got it. I needed to send your video live before I did that. I think. Got it. No worries. No worries. Okay. Now. So, so I'm now sharing the screen. OK, cool. It shows up there. And I think, you know, this is Security Center. We've talked a little bit about it. We've drilled into some of the data that winds up being um, extrapolated outside of environ or inside of environments. Azure Defender is its own blade. And this is kind of like your your finger on the pulse, so to speak. It's a really good high level overview. And you can see right here, there are a handful of environments that don't have Azure Defender enabled. So if you see something that says upgrade, you can click on that. You can select the subscription. If I upgrade it, it's not going to work. I don't have rights to do that, but you just upgrade everything at the subscription level for VMs or for, for servers, right? Same thing with Key Vault. It's not enabled for these subscriptions. You could do it one by one. You could do all subscriptions at once and hit upgrade. So that'll showcase uh, for each one of the different Azure Defenders which is kind of cool. Over here, you've got insights. So your most prevalent security alerts will show up here. This is access from an unusual location to a blob storage container. So let's start digging into here and let's figure out exactly what's showing up. So you'll see that the it's considered a low severity alert. The status is still active. This is the time that it was kicked off. It looks like nobody <laughs> is touching this environment, uh, which is perfectly fine. I think in a real environment, you'd probably see this be a little closer to the actual date, not uh, February for the kickoff. And then you want to take a look at the full details, right? So you'll see the Azure resource in question. You'll see the IP that it's been hit from. You know, it's normally not touched from this area. And this is kind of the network connection. So, you know, the investigation steps are key here. So you want to view related storage activity using storage analytics. 
You can see how to configure it. So again, you don't have to be super rigorous on understanding all of the nuances of how to configure this. Azure Security Center guides you throughout the whole entire process, just like when you are looking at it, uh, trying to build up your secure score. Very similarly, you'll get a lot of information to help you configure it and make it be more secure, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, also here, take action, right? This is where you can limit access to your storage account following the privilege of least principle. Um, you want to revoke all storage access tokens that may be compromised, right? So if you're using SAS tokens, revoke them. Ensure that all storage tokens are stored in a secure location such as Azure Key Vault. And that ties in the whole notion of you probably want to enable Azure Defender for Key Vault because they're very closely tied together. Um, and then the idea of preventing future attacks, right? So you can think about enabling private link. This shows you how to do it manually. Um, you can go into the resource that needs to have the uh, environment be configured. So you can also build up an automated response. So if you're doing this more often, meaning maybe you provisioned a number of storage accounts and maybe you provisioned uh, a number kind of in close proximity to one another in terms of them being in existence, you can build a logic app that will go in and enable a private link for each one of the storage accounts. You could trigger the logic app from there. You can also suppress these alerts. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe this environment's not going to be around for that long. It's really up here to do a lot of testing and some analysis based upon theories with maybe developers or maybe your, da your data folks, right? You're trying to build up some way of, of thinking about an application that you want to try and capture data, right? So it's not going to be around that much. You can create a, sub a sub suppression rule as well. Um, this will also highlight your most attacked resources. So again, it's the unusual deletion in a blob storage container. Same concept, you can drill into each one of these alerts, figure out how to manually configure it so it doesn't continue to happen. You can suppress the alerts in the event that you don't care about getting alerts on this because this environment won't be around for longer than a day or two. Um, you can also build a logic app if you're seeing this happen more often in your environment and you want to fix it after things have been deployed, a logic app is a fantastic way of getting in there and using the logic app designer to help you trigger automated responses so that your environment's more secure. When you go down here, these are each of the sections that we talked about. So the VM vulnerability assessment, just in time access, adaptive application control, container image scanning, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of cool here. Think of this as a, a easy way to get into each one of these. So you can go into here and it'll showcase all of the VMs that are considered unhealthy. Now it'll showcase the remediation steps, right? The idea of, you know, just with a single click, enable the Qualsys vulnerability assessment, or you could click on them directly and see how remediate shows up underneath here as well as tr uh, trigger logic app. So if remediate will work. I don't have access to these VMs. Um, or I shouldn't be changing them, I should say. The ones I don't have access to are grayed out. The ones that I do have access to, it's not a regular subscription that I am a contributor to, but it'll showcase all of your VMs that are considered unhealthy. Also showcase your healthy resources and then resources that are, that are not applicable. So these are um, AKS clusters, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, the just-in-time VM access, we could enable it on these, or this already been enabled on these VMs, so you could request access this way. You'll see all the VMs where it, it's not, you know, configured. These are in my subscription, so I'll enable it on those two VMs. Uh, we'll enable it for 3389, and we'll say the max request time. It looks like you can actually go higher. I try to keep it at three hours. This. Uh, what's interesting is I think it was always three hours, but I feel like this has been a newer thing. I could be wrong though too. Things do change pretty quickly and I'm not always in here every single day, unfortunately, but I just enabled it uh, for those VMs and, and hit save. So that's been changed for those two VMs. So I can't just go and initiate an RDP session to those VMs uh, without enabling uh, or without requesting the, the just in time. So I would go in, I would request access um, indicate where I needed it to be, um, toggle it on, oops, toggle it on for 3389, open up ports, and then I can get into that, that server. Um, I 
think the file integrity monitoring monitoring is kind of cool here too. So you don't really know what's happening in your environment unless you're getting in there regularly. So having tools like this gives you that overview of how things are performing. So you can and upgrade the plan. Um, it's tied to a log analytics workspace. These are enabled already. I wonder if I've got any where it's not enabled. I think all mine have it enabled because I do believe it's valuable to get that information. But you can just you can enable it and then you can go into the file integrity monitoring components inside of log analytics and start to figure out what has changed in your environment. So yeah, so this kind of gives you a nice overview of Azure Defender. And as you see clicking through here, you drill into the same screens that you would have drilled into had you just gone in to do things like upgrade your secure score or try and turn your secure score to a higher amount, right? So same sort of concept exists here, but you can build alerts off of this, whereas the secure score is something that would just help your security posture after the fact. This can alert you in real time, and it's just a matter of turning it on for each one of these Azure services to hopefully give you a better viewpoint of how your environment's performing from a security perspective and to ensure that these past resources that you may not have great visibility into are, are being monitored. Because I think the big piece here is there's a lot that we don't have the same level of control and touch. So leaning on a cloud-based solution or a cloud native solution like Azure Security Center with Azure Defender, um, that helps you really piece together what's going on in the environment and it helps you maintain that security posture so that you don't all of a sudden become breached um, as you've moved more and more workloads into Azure. So I will stop sharing because that's basically what I was going to go through. Very nice. And then do you want me to round it out or do you want to round yeah, it out? Go ahead okay. and round it out here. Let's okay, perfect. So yeah, so today we covered what is C what, what is CSPM and what is CWPP, right? Um, and those are terms you're going to see more regularly if you start to follow Azure Security Center. Um, it's cloud security protection management and cloud workload protection. Oh, pl is it platform protection? I can't remember. It's it's basically that you've got the uh, like the secure score side of it, and you've also got your proactive monitoring. So the secure score is the CSPM, those types of recommendations to make your environment more secure, and the CWPP. Think of that as Azure Defender. Um, and then we talked about Azure Defender for server, for SQL, for storage, for Key Vault, for Azure Resource Manager, Azure DNS, uh, Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Container Registry, App Service. We went through some final considerations, how you can export some of that into a seam like Azure Sentinel or a third party seam. You also have to think about the defense in depth, right? The idea that we're really trying to protect the data and we're trying to do it in a way where you have an idea of what's been accessed in your environment and you can maintain that security posture to protect you from a potential breach. Uh, and then we walked through the, the demo of Azure Defender and, and where that exists and that rounds out the session. Yep, and we've got uh, our next session coming up in a couple weeks as we continue through our uh, our security series that Shannon and I have been doing. So uh, I want to thank everybody for attending today uh, and uh, feel free to catch up on our previous sessions on the Opsigility uh, website or on our YouTube channel. And uh, otherwise, thanks for attending this uh, Cloud Maker Expert Talk. I'm Dwayne Natwick. And I'm Shannon Keen. Thanks for attending. Thanks for attending. Have a great day.